Coming up, city volunteers in Jordan help Syrian refugee children undergo necessary surgeries. A city staff member won the honor of 2016 Taiwan National Model Worker. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. Born into the hardship of war, many children face even more challenges associated with physical disabilities, such as the fate of 56 Syrian children in Jordan's Atari refugee camp. After many months of searching for doctors to perform surgeries, the pain of these children has finally been lessened. The scream and cries of children come from this group of Syrian refugees. 56 children under the age of four are temporarily housed in Jordan's Satari refugee camp. Because their Syrian mothers are suspected of being subject to the effects of chemical weapons during the war, they were all born with defects such as hernia, and perforate anus and cryptochitism. Hello. The ignorance and inherent Hello. cruelty of adults should not be borne by children. With the help of Tzuji, eight infants underwent emergency surgery to help ease their pain. Refugees fleeing their homes not only lack basic necessities, but also basic medical care. In Malaysia, a group of Qing refugees from Myanmar live in the mountains. Song Yi is one such individual who fell and suffered a fracture. Later, she contacted such volunteers to come to her aid. There is only one path in this forest, which is the backside of Desa Park City. Volunteers from Zuji Selangor and Kuala Lumpur chapter follow this winding path, led by Song Yi's husband, a Qin refugee from Myanmar. Living in the mountains are these Qin refugees from Myanmar. Previously, there were only seven households, but has now increased to 22 households. There is no water and electricity, and all cooking has to rely on firewood. When Song Yi was collecting firewood in the mountains, she had an accident and broke her arm. She says she's going to die from the pain. She went to the Jing Si Hall to ask for help and was worried about her medical expenses. A medical report showed that everything is normal, but Song Yi is still concerned about her health. Thus, Ziji volunteers accompanied her to a Ziji free clinic center for a more in-depth exam. I don't see anything wrong. Today, we came to this clinic to see Dr. Fu. The doctor told her that her fall only broke her arm and didn't damage any internal organs, which were all healthy, which helped put her at ease. When a mirror cracks, you will always have these cracks. There will be times when it is painful when the weather is not good. Sometimes our bones can even predict the weather. Caring Zhiji volunteers provide translation to give Song Yi some peace of mind, ensuring that she is in fact healthy. According to the doctor, she should not be in pain anymore, but in her current living environment, she may have always felt uneasy. Due to poor communication, Song Yi had trouble understanding her previous medical report. Thanks to Zhiji volunteers' translation work, she can finally rest easy and is no longer concerned about an old injury. In the aftermath of the April earthquake in Nepal a year ago, one mother named Goma gave birth to twin baby girls with the help of a Zhiji medical relief team. A year later, Zhiji volunteers revisited the family to learn about their current condition. Let's join them there. The smiles of the mother soon spread to the entire operation room. Everyone, including the local doctors and nurses, were excited and happy to see the twins. A year has passed and Zhiji volunteers still show concern for this family. On the day before the one-year anniversary of the quake, they have come for a visit. <laughs> My children and I are doing well. When my children were born after the earthquake, we struggled for a period of time. In our small family, there was no one to care for me. Medical volunteers then checked the family, ensuring Goma's belief that everything is right with the family. Uh, about the twin babies, they are growing very healthy, very, uh, very healthy without any uh, health issues till now. So uh, as I asked their parents, they are under all the vaccines, all the 
medicines medicines uh, that just they should be taking according to the, according to their ages and not only them uh, their parents are also healthy the family is fortunate to have met Zuji volunteers in the aftermath of the devastating earthquake will be able to face the future courageously with their support in our previous report, we mentioned that Tsuji's initial stage of refugee relief and flood relief missions in Serbia has been completed. Recently, Tsuji volunteers from Europe, who took part in these missions, traveled to Hualien's Jingsi abode to report on their experience. At the occasion, Master Cheng Yin commended them for helping refugees with sincerity and love. Having completed the initial stage of refugee relief mission in Serbia, Tsuji volunteers from Europe have returned to the Jingsi boat to report on this experience, which has inspired them. Since we spent time with them every day, we eventually became like a family. We told them a day or two before we left that we were leaving, and they were reluctant to part with us. More refugees need positive energy like this, which helps them realize there is hope. Despite the difficulties these volunteers encountered while providing aid, they persevered in delivering supplies and care to those in need, winning the recognition of the refugees and the local NGOs. We provided aid for several days, and the commissioner for refugees saw our work. Then his attitude towards us changed a lot, and he gave us recognition. After sharing their experiences, the volunteers also discuss plans for future relief missions, ready to continue helping the refugees on their journey to a better future. A police officer or a firefighter is considered to be one of the most dangerous jobs. Having to constantly deal with life and death situations can wear them out quickly mentally. That Tsuji has established the Tsuji Police and Firefighters Families Association to help support police officers, firefighters, and their families. As its members are mostly retirees from either professions or families of fallen officers or firefighters, they can easily get through to those they're helping. Whenever the season changes and I have to organize our clothes, sometimes I see e -rays articles. Or when I see things that belong to him, I will be reminded of him, which makes me feel hollow and cold inside. Through a heartwarming embrace, much can be said without words. On the day of interview, Tsuji volunteers gather at the Chen's home in Jiayi. Tsuji's brothers and sisters were a great help. Thanks to them, we were able to slowly cope with our loss. We're truly grateful. After working hard on rehabilitating her mind, Yang can finally talk about the death of her son. In July of 2013, the couple's youngest son, Chen Yi Rei, who was a firefighter, perished while on duty. Leaning on his cane and limping, he climbed slowly up the stairs to the second floor of Ban Chao Funeral Home to offer his condolences. We were truly moved. Really, such heartfelt sincerity just can't be faked. The man that has touched Yang Jinfeng was Yang Qilin, a member of Tsuji Police Association. At the time, he was recovering from a stroke. But in spite of his condition, he still came to the memorial service. The same tragedy that befell our family also happened to them as well. So I came knowing fully what they are going through, which helped pass on my feelings to them. 
A retired airport police officer, Yang Qiming, and his wife, Sun Lianjin, also lost their child years ago. After coming to terms with their loss, the couple joined the association to support families of police officers and firefighters. It was really difficult because for me, it was as if I had to relive through that period of my life. It was as if I was back to where I started again. I probably helped console some 30 families. Some of these families have really become a part of my family to this day. As he lives in Taipei, so we cannot visit him as often. Now that he has returned to Jiayi for a visit, since he's like my own big brother, when the big brother comes home, we surely want to meet up with him. Though the Chens have lost their son, they have received plenty of familial love. This is why the Cixi Police Association was established. On February 2nd of 1995, the third day of Chinese New Year holiday, a major gas explosion occurred in Banqiao, damaging some 100 homes and leaving many residents homeless. At the site of gas explosion, right outside of police lines, a group of volunteers clad in blue and white uniform were quickly preparing hot meals, which caught the attention of the then police captain Wang Anbang. He wondered who the volunteers were and why they were there as early as the police. Because of the accident, Taiwan's police force began to take notice of Cixi's association. Actually, back in 1994, Cixi volunteer Wong Qianhui, Zhuang Wenjian, Si Jin, and several others came together to establish the Cixi Police and Firefighters Families Association. For 22 years, its members have been supporting the country's police and firefighters. I was a policeman for about 27 years, so I know full well where a police's stress comes from and how an officer should adjust him or herself to better cope with all sorts of problems at work. So that's what I've been doing mostly. Police and firefighters are often overwhelmed at work and thus when pushed beyond their limit. Many often opt to commit suicide. When notified of such deaths, Wong Qianhui often blames herself for not being able to do more. I kneeled down beside him and apologized for not getting through to him in time before he pulled the trigger. I said, sorry for not being there in time to hear you out. Personally, I think Ziji's association takes on a supportive role while providing counseling for officers who need it. To be able to serve such a role is a great help for our officers, of course. Police and firefighters are both among the top 10 most dangerous jobs. But thanks to the support of Cixi Police Association, they now have someone to lean on and confide in. Though the volunteers may not be professional counselors, they are like family members who will always be there. Next, we'll meet one of the staff members of the Ziji Foundation, Liu Zhongyan, who has worked tirelessly to promote environmental protection and Ziji's humanitarian aid. To better understand the needs of disaster victims, he has also traveled to places including Pakistan, North Korea, and China. His dedication and hard work has won him the honor of 2016 Taiwan National Model Worker. With the stove, the Ziji Mobile Diner is in action. The mobile diner, which was used in the aftermath of Trans-Asia Airway plane crash and the Mainong earthquake, has helped bring warmth to those in need. The person behind this innovation is Liu Zhongyan. After seeing the needs of the disaster sites, I eagerly wanted to develop a device which could improve conditions for disaster victims. Seven years ago, Liu gave up his high-paying job at a foreign company to work for Ziji. He then dedicated himself to environmental protection and the development of Ziji's faith-based innovations. To better understand the needs of disaster victims, he has also been to Pakistan, North Korea, and China's Guizhou. Turning from a volunteer to a staff member, I've always followed the master's teachings. The master is always the first one to test the functions of our innovations. 
so we need to pass the master's test. Therefore, we are deeply touched. All the master's disciples keep in mind the master's mindfulness and work hard to develop new devices. To provide needed aid in response to disasters that can strike at any moment, Liu is not taking his chances. He hopes to continue doing his best to help more people in need. In Pingdong, Taiwan, a girl who was raised in a single-parent family was often ostracized by her peers at school. It was due to the girl's body odor that her peers would stay away from her. Furthermore, the teacher found out that the girl's unclean home was the culprit of the smell. Thus, she called on city volunteers to help this poor family. Moving out all of the furniture from inside the house, today city volunteers are helping clean up the home of Mr. Cheng, who not only suffers from kidney problems, but also has Parkinson's. Her teacher noticed that her classmates made her an outcast because of her smell. The student also stutters, so the teacher asks us to check on her family conditions. Due to his feeble health, he has not been able to keep his home in a sanitary environment for his daughter. The volunteers leave no corner unturned, even ensuring the rotten bed frame is ripped out. The male volunteers are in charge of the heavy work, while the female volunteers scrub things clean. I'm glad I can help a care recipient out. I'm filled with dharmic joy. I can feel the strength of compassionate giving increasing. Those who have joined Siji today include new trainees as well as Siji care recipient families. Coming here to help clean up makes me feel good. Working together to provide a clean environment for the family, the daughter who is in middle school can finally have her room back and lets a smile slip onto her face. Thanks to the cooperation of her teacher and city volunteers, the young girl has felt the love and warmth of society once more. New Taipei City is a vast area comprised of many different communities, many of which are prosperous, such as Banqiao, Zhonghe, Yonghe, and Sanchong. Do you know that it also includes one remote indigenous area, Wulai, which developed a prosperous tourism industry that inadvertently led to the disappearance of an indigenous Atayo culture. Recently, the Ministry of Science and Technology, along with teachers and students from National Zhengzhi University, began a humanity, innovation and social practice program for Wulai to preserve its culture. This traditional tile dance represents the vitality of this culture in the Wulai area. We follow a storyline from the first act to the sixth act. The first act is hunting and raiding, and later a harvest and wedding ceremony. This story is told through a series of dances. Almost all the staff performing at this hotel theater are all indigenous people from Wulai's Fusan. The only vibrant settlement in Fusan is in Wulai because it has more tourists and thus more business opportunities. The most popular attractions in Wulai are the main street, waterfalls and the tile culture and customs. But due to excessive commercialization, many indigenous customs are slowly disappearing. This is an indigenous tribe that is the closest to a metropolis, and people here experienced the impact of tourism early on, so some of the traditional culture has disappeared, which could lead to some problems. This alternative development program, sponsored by the Ministry of Science and Technology, together with teachers and students from National Zhengzhi University, is intended to allow indigenous people in Wulai to find their own path. Hello! Nori! Tour guide Wang Shou Ching is checking on a weaver. This is what my mother made, and this is my own color skin. <laughs> Gao's mother once taught many of the women in the tribe how to weave. The government wanted to promote indigenous culture, which includes weaving, so they sought my mother to teach them. Weaving skills also draws the attention of tourists who want to experience this traditional craft. Local tourists, especially those with children, will want to try to weave, so I'll let them try it. And though their work isn't beautiful, they get to experience something which is a part of a Taiyo culture. 
东吃平这样。In the industrialized society, when machine-made things are so common, we see less handmade items. So when people come across handmade products, they're often surprised and think it is quite special. Wang Shouqing's job is to lead tourists through Wu Lai and promote the indigenous handicraft of bead production. Inside this workshop are dazzling array of costumes and beaded jewelry. The most prized of which are these white beads, which are actually a quad seed. The elders used to joke that those women who have more quake seeds in their necklace have a higher standing within the tribe. Showing off this handmade basket, Shou Qing displays its many functions, which reveal that traditional handicrafts in Wulai continue to represent the vitality of a tile culture to revitalize this community. The abode of Taipei's Fa Ji Temple, Dharma Master Hui Yue, has passed away at the age of 101. During his lifetime, Dharma Master Hui Yue has dedicated himself to promoting the Tiantai School of Buddhism. A memorial service was held on his behalf on April 23rd, during which more than 600 Dharma Masters and followers chanted Buddhist sutras in memory of the Master. Six drama masters from the Jingsi abode have also attended a memorial service to express their deepest reverence of drama master Hui Yue. <laughs> The abode of Fa Ji Temple in Taipei, Dharma Master Hui Yue passed away at the age of 101 at the beginning of April. On the morning of April 23rd, a memorial service is held on his behalf. I have followed him for five to six years. He preached the Diamond Sutra. I hope he will return to awaken the public with his vow. Dharma Master Hui Yue has put in effort to pass on Buddhist teachings. We should do our best to hold the service after his passing. Dharma Master Hui Yue has cultivated diligently according to the spirit of the Lotus Sutra. Being compassionate, he upholds precepts firmly. Six Dharma Masters from the Jingsi abode have also come to attend the memorial service. We are saddened and dismayed. The Venerable Master's contribution to Buddhism is immeasurable. He cultivated diligently and led a frugal life, setting an example for us all. A total of 600 Dharma Masters and followers chant Buddhist Sutra at the service, showing their gratitude to Dharma Master Hui Yue, who dedicated himself to promoting the Tiantai School of Buddhism. Being a role model, Dharma Master Hui Yue will be remembered for his contributions and virtues. In celebration of Tsuji's 50th anniversary, students from Tsuji University, Tsuji University of Science and Technology, Tsuji Senior High School affiliated with Tsuji University, and Tainan Tsuji Senior High School will join hands to perform a musical adaptation of the Sutra of Innumerable Meanings. Despite having their midterm before the performance, students still seize their spare time after class to rehearse. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.